Hi, my name is Pete, and these are Fast Facts for Faith. You may have heard objections to the truth of Christianity, the Bible, God, or Jesus. But did you know that there's a whole area of Christianity called apologetics that's dedicated to giving good, solid answers to those questions? I think that's one of the big problems with the questions as they come forward. Often they're presented as excuses for not believing rather than real questions that have real answers to them. So as a Christian, I think it's important to identify questions, but then look for answers. Also, are those questions bothering you? It's probable that that won't go away, so I should face it straight up and get those good answers. Apologetics is a field in Christianity that helps to give you good answers to those questions. You may have heard, the Bible was written so long ago. So much time has passed. How do we even know it says what it originally said? But did you know that of all ancient documents, the Bible is the most verifiable, specifically the New Testament? The New Testament tells the history and the story of Jesus. How would we test to see whether it still says what it originally said? You may have heard somebody compare the Bible to that game of telephone where you whisper into someone's ear some secret and they whisper and it goes all the way around the circle until it returns to the original person and then it says something completely different. And the reasoning goes, if this could happen in just a few minutes, then what would happen over 2,000 years? And it seems to make sense at first, except for the whole point of the telephone game is to deceive and for something to come out different. There's no verifying, there's no corroborating, there's no double checking that what was said was correct. The telephone game in New Testament terms would be more like this. Saying everything to the whole room, having everybody repeat it, but also recording it so that we can listen back on it afterwards. Let me illustrate and explain. As we look back at documents of ancient history, we see very few fragments of things like Thucydides' history, Herodotus' history, even fictional works like the Iliad and the Odyssey. We see two things, a limited number of copies and a pretty substantial amount of time from the time of the original writing to the first copy we have. It's a completely different thing with the New Testament. The earliest manuscript that we have from the completion of the New Testament dates only 40 years after the New Testament was completed. Did you know that the time gap between when the Iliad was written and the first copy we have is over 400? But people don't question that this is what the original writing was. Furthermore, when you look at the copies, it's almost embarrassing how many New Testament fragments we have compared to some of these other ancient works that every classical historian accepts as fact. The New Testament altogether, both in Greek and foreign languages, has about 26,000 fragments. But not only that, even if we took all of the ancient manuscripts that were fragments or entire books or sections of the New Testament and we threw them all away, we could still recreate the entire New Testament just from quotes in extra biblical writings. The early church fathers wrote prolifically and they quoted the Bible constantly. That doesn't mean that everything that the Bible says is true. What it does mean is we can't say that we don't know what it originally said. You may have heard that the Bible is just a bunch of mythology and stories, but did you know that it's really accurate history? C.S. Lewis, who was a professor of Greek studies, English literature, and ancient mythology, in examining the New Testament said, I know mythologies, and the New Testament is not that. It's presenting the true story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Now that's a bold claim to make. How can we say that the New Testament is historically reliable? Luke, who is the author of the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, one prominent archaeologist in examining his writing said that he made reference to 54 cities, 31 countries, 9 islands without a single error. I think most of us can agree that Luke's Bible writings are not primarily about geography. And yet if he was so painstakingly accurate in those details, it does stand to reason that he would be even more accurate with the main subject of his text, the Son of God.
Even if the Bible has been transmitted faithfully, and if it's historically accurate, you may have heard someone said, isn't it still just another book? But did you know that the Bible has evidences of divine authorship? The subject specifically that I'm talking about is prophecy. Prophecy isn't taking a guess at what might happen, but accurately speaking of what will happen before it happens. Someone who prophesies has to have either total knowledge of the future or the ability to make the future come to pass. God says this of himself, and the Bible is filled with prophecies. There are a close to a thousand prophecies within the Bible, some of them with amazing accuracy. More than half of these have been fulfilled, many of them regarding the person of Jesus. One book with amazing prophetic accuracy is the book of Daniel. So much so that critics viewed it as written as history far after the events rather than prophecy written long before. The evidence doesn't bear it out. If the Bible is so accurate concerning all of these fulfilled prophecies, doesn't it stand to reason that the ones yet to be fulfilled will be also? You may have heard that science and the Bible contradict each other. But did you know that some of the great scientists of history were Bible-believing Christians? Let's make a distinction between good science and bad science. Good science would propose a theory, do some testing, and then observe the results, ready to accept or reject what the original theory was. Bad science wouldn't do those things. Things like the law of gravity or H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen making water. These are repeatable, verifiable. We can do experiments, get evidence, test and know they're true. Some of the great scientists of history, Isaac Newton, calculus, physics, the law of gravity, Robert Boyle and William Ramsey founded the field of chemistry. Genetics by Gregor Mendel. When you move into the health-related fields, Louis Pasteur founded the field of bacteriology. Pasteurization of milk, immunizations, vaccinations. He laid the groundwork for all of those things. Even when we look at these things, Charles Babbage was a computational scientist who started to move forward into calculating machines and computers. Electronics, Ambrose Fleming. And then you guys may know Samuel L. Morse. Morse code you've heard of, the telegraph. When we talk about computing machines, long distance communication and electronics coming together in one of these devices, that all began because there were Bible-believing Christians who believed that there was a real observable world that followed rules that were made by a creator. The early followers of Jesus, it never occurred to them to question, did he actually perform that miracle? Did he really say what he just said? Did he actually die on a cross? Did he rise again? They were eyewitnesses of those things. So in not questioning those things, they could get on to following Jesus, learning from him, doing the things he said. If you and I are tripped up by the reality of these things, it stands to reason that we're not going to get to enjoy the life that Jesus has for us. It's important that when we have these questions, we find the good answers to them so we can get on to enjoying walking with God.